You guys must be really busy, particularly you, Paul, because you're running your record label, Respond. I mean, you're a Polydor artist, if you like, and you've got your, your publishing company, too. I mean, are you, you must be busier now than you ever were even in the jam days when you were touring and what have you. You find that? I suppose so, yeah. I suppose, yeah, it does, um, I suppose more, it does take up more of my time now. But, but, I, um, but I enjoy it more now, you know, so I don't mind. I don't really notice it too much. Because Sometimes you feel you're more in control, you think? Yeah, probably, yeah, I think so. I've got a lot of legend. I, I mean, it, it's one of those things where, of course, you were identified so solely, even though you've broken away, the jam of split, you're with Respond, and uh, you're connected with a different kind of music. People still think of you as a member of the jam, and I guess forever you'll be associated with that tag. I mean, presumably it's nothing you're ashamed of. But uh, does it bother you when people are constantly comparing what you're doing now with uh, the things that you were doing with the jam? No, not really, because I think, I, think, um, I think the majority of people have been quite... You know, quite good about it, really, because I don't think there's been too much of that com constant comparison to the jam. You know, we we you get you see a lot of other groups who split up and, and there's new stuff they try and do. So I haven't really got that many complaints about it because I, I haven't really noticed that too much. You know. Now the setup that I, I've read about the respond and I've, I haven't talked to you about it, but I mean uh, the reports seem to all say the same things that you, what you want to do is create a, a sort of a company the way run on the lines of, of Stax and Motown records yeah. in the well, 1960s. A bit more like the BBC, really. <laughs> now, I mean, this is obviously going back to your youth. Why didn't you want to try this kind of thing with the jam? Why did you wait <clears> to, to fold the jam before you entered into this? What, the respond thing? Yeah. Well, I, I would have just never been able to do it. I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't have had the time to do it. She's just kind of <laughs> what I said before. Yeah. No, I'm, I, I, I'm not sure. You know, it was a just t the jam was just total commitment all the time, 24 hours a day. Mm. Why and are you I, still? Although this takes up more of my time, please. Yeah. No. Although, although this takes up, although this takes up more of my time, it's as it's as it's all kind of combined and all together. Yeah. It's just it's um, it's a bit easier to do. I'm not sure I explain myself very well. Yeah. Well, I mean, why are you as an artist, as a performer, if you like, with Polydor and not with Respond? That is slightly confusing. Why are you not on your own label? It comes down to dough, you know, because uh, from the, the money I got from Polydor for resigning with them. I've used to finance respond, you see. So if I mean I couldn't have done it unless I'd have signed back with Polydor. I would have thought though, I mean you must have a lot of dough if you like from all the, the songwriting royalties and mm. performing and things like that. Yeah. Well I've got a, f a fair bit, but most of it's tied up in think you know, in those in the things on uh, my adventures, you know. Yeah. Like the publishing company. Yeah. Right story. And respond as well, put you know, use a lot of money to put into that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now the thing is the music that we've been hearing from Respond up to now, and including the, the Money Go Round singles, is dance music. I mean, is this something that you do yourself to... I mean, you, I have never read anywhere about you going out disco dancing or something like that, but... You, well, it's only because we don't go to clubs that are written about, you know. We try and find, um, you know, more quiet and sedate places, really. Mm. More like, um, you know, tea rooms places like that. <laughs> In the more sort of old-fashioned ballroom dancing. You know. <laughs> What about the, the, the music you're listening to? Because obviously the 60s were important to you because there are influences there. Are there people today whose music that you enjoy, that you would yeah. dance to, that you get off on? I like, um, I think, you know, black music generally has, has got so good over the last two years. It's just got so much stronger, much harder. The sound's much harder. And the lyrics especially are really, really good. Mm. And then, um, like, English bands, I really like Fun Boy Free and Culture Club. I think they're both brilliant. There's lots of other, maybe not so many groups, but individual records are like the new Joe Boxer singles, I think's good. And um, I don't know, I, I, can't, I can't think of any offhand, but, you know, just occasional records. All right. How did you two guys meet? I mean, you are the essential style counsellors. Mick, can you uh, tell me how you met Paul? I mean, were you friends from, like, the old times? Because you were a Dexy Midnight Runner, weren't you? <laughs> yeah, but not for very long. Um, you done a runner, didn't you? Yeah, I did a runner. <laughs> no, I met him before then, uh, in the late 70s, way back when. And, um... Just did a little bit of work with the jam, some live stuff, and I played on Setting Suns. And then uh, he decided he wanted to see me again after a few years. I was summoned. Yeah, I thought I couldn't live without him. Yeah. I've got some. The first letter here is uh, from Sue, and she writes from Molesworth Peace Camp, Old Western Road, Brington, Huntington. 
and she says, Dear Paul, what I want to do is apologize for the few punks who threw things at you at Brockwell Park. I myself could, I suppose, be slotted into that category, so that's why I'm writing. I was not there when Style Council were on, as I had left and discussed earlier. It was a shame, as I had originally gone down to see Style Council and the Damned. Anyway, we're not all like those few. Some of us had gone down because we are fighting for peace, which is a contradiction in terms, but I can't find another phrase. Good luck in the future, anyway. Shame about the jam split. And that's from Sue. What ha actually happened for those of us who weren't at Brockwell Park? I mean, it was documented in the music press, for those who might not have seen it. You played a couple of weekends well, ago, didn't you? At, yeah. uh, it's the same old story, you know, because there's only, there's just a few people, you know, a few people lobbying stuff. It wasn't even just us, it was everybody. That's right. I know, John Peel copped it. It was just it, like, it was 300 people out of all those thousands and thousands of people that are there for like, you know, for, for because they were committed, you know, for, and there for a real, pur for real purpose. So I think things like get blown out of proportion a bit, you know, do you know what I mean? It's, it's stupid to pick up on 300 people out of all those thousands. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I don't think it's worth, you know, it didn't really, I don't think it's sport the day. I mean, the, the press didn't, you know, the press didn't cover it at all, but that's because they're so biased anyway, because they're so right wing, you know. Mm -hmm. And the music papers are, you know, it's pretty negligible what they say about it anyway. But uh, I still think the main thing was achieve that because, you know, apart from that, which was, like I said, it's nothing because it's like a, a thing in the ocean, you know. And it's, um, all those thousands of people that, you know, that, actually went on the march and were there was more important than any of that all right but thanks for the letter so okay really there's nice. plenty more mail where that came from let's hear the style council this is money go round is this a, an old song of yours or is something that you re wrote recently and uh, put on record <clears throat> well it, it came about through um me mick and zeke when we were recording speed like a child and um you know we was, we was jamming one day you know a little, little bit out of it <laughs> no, we were jamming. We were just mucking about, really, in between takes to speak like a child, and it just sounded so good. It just had a certain feel, so we kept all the best bits and chopped it up and just made out, made up that what you hear there. And I had some lyrics anyway, and I just put them to it, you know. So it's really a really spontaneous thing. And it's very different, of course, from speak like a child. I guess that the intention was to do something that was completely different. Well, yeah, but, well, yeah. I mean, that, we have obviously got that in mind to try and do something different every time, of course, you know. But at the same time, it's got to be good, whatever it is, you know. But there isn't so, the main thing about it is, I mean, there isn't any actual writer as such. My name's on it because just of a convenience, really. So it's just something that just came out of all of us, just uh, having a bit, you know, grooving, you know. A jam session? Yeah, if you like. Pardon you know. the uh, pun. Then. I like that, yeah. Okay. Well, cool. and money go round. I mentioned the video earlier because your hair was greased back. What are you actually doing in the video? Because you were... Uh Sort of uh, aping the Cliff Richard and the Shadows uh, routine in the, on the Speak Like a Child in the open deck bus uh, before. What, what, do you, what, what is this one about? Um, <clears throat> well, it's sort of. Is it a secret? No, it's. What is it? It's very difficult to describe it's it. It's quite sort of gangsterish, you know. It's only something I can think of. Okay. I'll tell you, can I just clear something out actually while, while we've got the chance now? Yeah. Now, I've noticed that a lot of people have been, have been calling us Style Council, and I think the is very important. I just, I just, just like to say that's so. The Style Council. You please, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. On orange note paper, Bin, Bindia Patel, Dia Patel of Hillfield Road, Camberton and Cambridge, uh, says to Paul that in the early jam days you were influenced by a lot of the new punk thing, the Clash, the Pistols and all that. What do you think of bands like the Clash now, in other words, I guess, to any mm. bands from that period that have uh, gone on? Well, there's not many that's lasted, I suppose, is there? But I don't like the Clash's music anymore. What about Susie and the Banshees? Um, no, I don't. No, I don't. Well, to answer it, no, I don't. I don't think much of any of those. Um, any did, of those people. Anymore, did you at no. the time, though? At the time, yeah, I thought they were great at the time. Yeah, yeah. I liked. Um, I liked the first Clash LP. was was brilliant. You know, and some of the early things. But I, I don't know. Have you got a jam biography coming up? Because Bendia is uh, waiting like crazy for it. Yeah, there is. But um, I'm, not, I'm not really too sure when it will be. Probably, well, hopefully in July, early July, sometime. But um, yeah, that's be, that's been done. It's just being put together at the moment. And who's written that? Um, this uh, Italian called Paolo Hewitt, who writes the enemy. Okay. Is your dad still looking after uh, you as a, a manager or the yeah. style council? Is he? I mean, yeah. you must have a fairly special relationship with your father because he was he, he worked obviously with you with with the jam. I mean, what what sort of relationship do you ha do you have? Do you ask him for advice when it comes to business things, or does he? Well, I haven't got much. You. you know, I haven't really got much. Uh, much of an idea of business and that, mainly because it, that sort of side of it really bores me, you know. But um, so so he mainly does all that. But I don't know it's just a partnership, really. I don't, you know. I suppose I take care of more of the more um, 
More, you know, more artistic things, really. Yeah. I've got, I, I have an artistic bent. Do, and he 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 enjoys all of all the music too, does he? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, he, he enjoys mine anyway. <laughs> I remember meeting him. I think He's it was a bit biased actually. At your first uh, top of the pops, he he came down uh, with you. I remember that was I guess for in the city when you came down and played that. Uh, Graham Ingham of uh, Bristol uh, says he enjoyed the, the Style Council session last week, and like a lot of other people, he was saddened by the jam split. Although he appreciates your uh, reasons for it. Uh, however, the music the Style Council have produced has fully endorsed his decision, that is Paul's decision, enabled him to move in an exciting new direction. I particularly like the song Paris Match from the session, or Parry Match. Uh, can you ask Paul when this is going to be available on record? That was actually mm. one of the songs that uh, I enjoyed from the session. Well, that was, um, <coughs> that was one that I especially wrote for your session. You finished it that morning, didn't you? <laughs> we did that, like, this is the truth, and we, and we rehearsed it that morning. And that was the first time, the one, the one we'd done in the session was the first time we played it with everyone else, we just, and we'd done it live. So I think it came out quite well for that, you know. So we're definitely going to re-record it, but we're going to do some, um, some recording sessions in, in France quite soon. And we hope to do it there, and I hope to try and do a version of it with me singing in French. <laughs> why, why have you chosen France? Any, any reason to go and record well, it's just, we're just going to start off in France. We hope to do a bit of recording in, in, in uh, quite a few European countries. We're trying to develop this new European sound. <laughs> You're smiling a lot when you say that. Uh, hello to Rez and any gremlins who may be listening. This is from Graham Ingham. And uh, this letter comes from Brentford. It's uh, Lucy Davies. And uh, it sort of has a similar sentiment on a letter from Michael Pierce, who writes from Wyndham College. And basically they feel the style council is not an alternative like they reckon the jam were i mean to paraphrase these letters i'll pass them on to you but mm. i mean do you they always saw the jam as an alternative band as an alternative to the scene and uh what lucy is saying is that the music the style council are making is more geared for the chart she feels i mean do you, mm. how do you see that or how do you do you react to that well, she obviously she obviously haven't um, she hasn't listened to her money go around she, she, you know i would imagine anyway because i don't she, i don't think anyone could say that after the money go around, you know, I think it's a bit unfair to really judge what, you know, what it's going to be like after just hearing one single. But um, I, you know, the the thing that is different about this is that there's no boundaries. I don't, you know, I'm not, I haven't got any set kind of um, guidelines to what what the music will be like. It could be anything. It's like the main thing is if the songs are good. That's the most important thing. Does that go with the Respond label as well? Yeah. All the acts. You must be flooded with tapes. When I mentioned earlier you being busy, I mean, there's just so many things to do. I mean, if you're running your own record label and company and publishing company and playing gigs and writing songs for the band, I mean, finding the time must be a problem, but actually listening to demos must be another problem because you must be flooded with cassettes of people who would like to be associated with you. Mm. Does that, I mean, do you actually listen to all the tapes? Do you, do you have time to do that? Um, yeah, it takes, some, it takes quite a long time to get around to listen to all of them, but I do, you know, I do eventually. And if people, you know, if anyone's listening, uh, send tapes in. They have to, have to be uh, patient, please. But I do, yeah. But um, you know, it's a bit tricky, really. It's a bit difficult because, I'm not sh you know, I suppose what we're mainly looking for is, is are just great songs. But they're, they're also, you know, in a, you know, I don't know. I suppose I suppose their influences have got to be um, quite similar. I sp you know, uh, to put it another way, like the questions, and also this new group which we signed called Craze, are both, are both kind of grew up with, um, with a lot of the seventy soul. So maybe like the first people they were initially influenced by have been Sheik, so like the, the late sent me Sheik stuff, you know, which is, I think is quite interesting. It's quite, a, and what the development, the, the, what they've come to now, their present development, I think is very interesting, you know. So there's a label sound, if you like, that you're going for. I mean, you well, perhaps wouldn't sign on a heavy metal band then, or a no. punk band as such. No, no, it'd have to be, it would have to be in a certain style, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I remember that's certainly what Stax and Motown had, and even some British labels in the 1970s. Island Records in the, in the late 60s had their own sort of sound and style, and a lot of that has gone now. Back to the jam, I mean, we obviously can't escape it. Martin Ling wants to know if there's any unreleased jam tracks still to be heard. <coughs> no, there isn't, actually. Um, there's a few demos lying around, but they're, they're just... They're really just scraps of songs. You couldn't release them, you know. It wouldn't be worth it. There's most, of them, most of them haven't got any lyrics on. That hasn't stopped record companies in the past from doing that. No, that's true, no. But um, I, think these are, I think these are beyond repair, these demos. <laughs> that's why they're never released, you know. But um, I'm trying to think. No, I don't think there is any unreleased stuff, no. There's no songs from the jam days that you'd like to give to somebody else to record then? What, record. what do you mean? What, what stuff, that, stuff that we actually That you out? wrote, maybe, and that you didn't actually release? Oh, no, they're rubbish, that's why I didn't release them. 
What is your, your favorite single so far this year, Martin wants to know? Do you have a favorite 45? Um, yeah, I like, <laughs> well, I've got a few really, but I, I really think, I really, really believe in Speak Like a Child. I thought it was a brilliant record. I'm not just saying it just because I'm involved in it. Honestly, you can, I can honestly say that outside of my involvement with it. Just a, lot, a lot of people won't believe, but I really can. I can see that in an objective way. I thought it just had so much life in it. You yeah. must have been pleased at, at its success then. I, yeah. I mean, that's one thing you've always had. I mean, your first ever single was a big hit. I mean, you've, you, you've never had a flop as such, have you? You haven't had any record that hasn't actually done well. Uh, what, chart-wise? No, I suppose not, no. They've always charted, yeah, if that's what you mean. Sure. Mm. And plenty of number ones as well. But, um, other records I've liked this year, I thought the Fanboy 3 LP was, was really good. And, um, and the Culture Club single was good. Mm. Does, I mean, having had records that have gone straight into the chart at number one, do you think that spoils you a little bit? Do you think that uh, when you don't have a record that makes top three or number one, you get uh, more disappointed than you were, obviously, when you started out and, like, a record in the 40 was great, I guess? Yeah. Well, yeah, it does spoil you a bit. I'm, I'm, I'm not... It doesn't at the moment, you know, because I've, I've got over that. It doesn't bother me anymore, that, that thing. I think... Uh, I think right, when you get your first number one, it just gets a bit frightening. You just think, what's going to happen to the sec you know, to the next record, to the follow-up? And if it doesn't reach number one, you just, you know, you just get a bit panicky about being one at wonders. It's a bit stupid, really. All this chart thing is as well. Mm. How did you feel about your great success in the NME Readers Poll this year, where you won, like, apart from best female uh, singer, you seem to mm. want every I'm working on that category. next year. <laughs> <laughs> get those votes in now. Uh, what jam record means the most to you? Um, Oh, I'm, I'm not sure. I like, I like, there's quite a few I like, really like a lot. Um, I like uh, Ghosts. I think that was a really good song. Mm -hmm. Off the Gift LP. Mm -hmm. And um, Beat Surrender was good as well. I don't know, I like, there's quite a few I like. For different Ma reasons. Mainly, um, mainly the later stuff, because I, I enjoyed the songs more. I thought they were better songs towards uh, the end of it. Oh, yeah? Mm. Okay. Um, some jam and fact and memory coming up in the second of our three of the best by request, a town called Malice. Uh, will come up after the Fun Boy 3 and Our Lips Are Sealed, which is, because it just is not time, because I've uh, got Paul Weller here and Mick Talbot, and I want to put a few more things to, to Paul and, and perhaps Mick. I'm, I'm curious to know if you still see Rick and Bruce at all. <coughs> no, not really, no. Not, um, you mean socially, don't you? Well, yeah. any, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, any time. <laughs> no, not, no, not really, no. Um, I saw Rick a little while ago, a few months ago. He was um, recording with his, with his new group, and he seemed really happy, and he seemed, you know, and we got on, a, got on really well, and I saw Bruce uh, a couple of weeks back, and he seemed to be doing okay now, he's sort of, um, I think he's sorting himself out more, and he's got a deal or something, and he's going to put a record out. So, um, but uh, well, we never socialised anyway in the jam, you know. Not in the, uh, not towards the, lo in the last few years we didn't anyway, because mm. um, just lead, lead different, you know, different lifestyles. Mm. Well, I mean, that's interesting, because I mean, if you, if you didn't feel part of a complete unit, I mean, socially and you know, obviously on a professional level you were. Well, I was, I'm going to ask you how you felt now because there are basically the two of you, you and Mick, making music with Style Council with guest artists appearing. I mean, are you quite anxious to get like a permanent combo together, if you like? No, that's, that's the beauty of it because um, just, you know, just trying to dra draft in the, the right people for the, for the right, you know, for the right song. It's, that's, the, that's the good thing about it. But, you know, we've still got that kind of discipline, if you like, with, with the two of us because it's, you know, it remains as nucleus of it. But that's what's so good about it, because you can just get the right people to enhance the song, you know. For instance, I mean, well, it's like Zeke's, Zeke's drumming on Speak Like a Child. Mm. And, and like Joe's bass playing on, the, on, the, on Money Go Round, it's just, you know, it's great, we can do that. Right. You need and, it, and it just gives you so much more freedom as well, because you don't get so many sort of like ego battles where, because somebody's a drummer or somebody's a guitarist, they've got to play on every record, which isn't always called for, you know. Mm. Are you still looking for a girl singer? I read somewhere that uh, you were quite anxious to get a permanent girl vocalist with yeah, if the yeah, style council. Yeah, if possibly, you know, you have to be, um, you know, have to be the right person, really. It's like a. It's well, who are you looking for? In case that girl is listening now, <laughs> who, who are you looking for? Well, like a female version of us, really. If anybody thinks they are, I mean, if anybody has any cassettes or, or anything like that of themselves... Is that, is that attitude as well, you see? That's another <coughs> thing. Where should they send them, then? Um, well, they can send them to respond, you know. And what's the address? <laughs> 4553 Sinclair Road, London, West 14. Okay. Or otherwise, they can send them to Polydor, get them as well. Okay. Or send them here if you miss the address, right. and I'll pass them on. Uh, Sandra well, and... Can they send them to your house, or do you think? To who? <laughs> 
Um, I am going to... What is this card from? Oh, Sandra and Peely from Alton, who says, Do you have any plans to record with Gary Kemp? Do you have any plans? Have no. Well, where, where would that question have come from? Were you um, singing together or were you singing together? Or something <laughs> well, like that? I don't know. Well, I don't know. Yeah. And um, Gary might be writing um, Tracy some songs. Well, there was talk of it anyway. I don't know what's happening now. Sandra Duncan, who says she is Torch Society member number 96. Good for you, kids, eh? Hey? She says, or oh, she's got uh, lots and lots of questions here. She's, I, I read recently the Style Council could be touring at the end of the summer. When exactly could this be, bearing in mind that some of your fans could miss the gigs if they clash with holidays? Well, we haven't, we haven't got any fixed date at all, really, so it's be better if I don't, you know, better, better to say nothing. Um, you know, we, def we definitely will do some gigs, but there's so many things we've got to do, you know, before that, like recording and, and stuff like that, so I really don't know. You know, I mean, definitely after September anyway. All right. Could you try to steer clear of nightclubs for the sake of some of your younger fans, mentioned Sandra? And this is something that in the last couple of weeks has come up a lot in, in letters from people who have... It started off with uh, a couple of girls writing in who wanted to see the alarm and they couldn't because they were under 18. And then right. I received more letters from people who had missed out concerts. I mean, would, I mean, obviously I would have imagined this is of some concern to you. you the, the under 18s can't come and well, see. Well, I don't like playing places with booze anyway because I just, you know, if people want you know, to do one or the other. If they want to drink and go to a pub, if you want to go and see a concert, then you know do that so if we do any gigs at all they'd be in theaters and we're not going to play i mean you certainly would never play those those horrible like barn barn places that the jam played i mean we'd probably be big enough anyway but it wouldn't want to so there'd, there'd be more kind of um i try i have to try and look for more interesting places more interesting theaters and maybe out of the way places places that don't often see yeah. gigs i guess but i wouldn't you know we wouldn't play like a, we wouldn't want to pl purposely play a licensed place anyway i think they're really boring Oh, can I just mention something? Yeah, is yeah. that all right? Um, just if anyone's interested, the, the Respond package is playing at the Lyceum on the 22nd of this month. So I just sort of just slipped in the let's call, was it? I think you did. Uh, I see Riot Stories send out anti-vivisection leaflets with their publications, and as you've decided to donate your royalties for money go round to Youth CND, right. do you plan to help animal organisations as well? Um, well, I hope to. I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to be recording a, a song from to include on one of their LPs. They're going to put like a, a compilation LP of different artists that have done songs for it. So I hope to do that at some point in time, yeah. Are you, I mean, along with the demos and cassettes that you receive from bands who want to work with you, I would imagine you are also flooded with letters from people who, once you know that you're committed to a cause like UCND, think, well, he might also be aligned to this cause as well. I mean, mm. do you find it difficult kind of answering, you know, people who want you to do benefits for other things? Yeah, because... You know, it's, it's very difficult with it because I don't, I don't like to criticise a lot of them because they've obviously, you know, a lot, of the, a lot of these people obviously feel committed to, to these things. But I, I, you know, if I'd done all of them, I'd end up like a, you know, it, like a, I'm trying to think, um, you know, you just come over a bit, bit too uh, goody like goody, you know. John Baez or somebody who like, did a lot yeah, of Tom Robinson things. or something, you know. They're probably well-meaning, but I just, I, you know, I can't stand that sort of image. And it's just, and I also people think you're a bit of a soft touch as well, you know. So I only just do things that which you know which I really feel committed to, or I think it's important for me to do it. And you are now presumably a part of UCND, are you? A member? Of no, I'm not UCND. I'm a bit too old for that now. But <laughs> I am a member of CND, though. Yeah. But I get, I put, give the royalties to have money going to UCND because I think they probably need it. All right. And a final question from Sandra. She wants to know what does the X I T S mean? That's what it says or looks like anyway on the back of your guitar. It's um, it's an ancient Buddhist symbol, you know. Just uh, you know, I don't like to, I don't like to reveal it really. It's like it's like my mantra, you know. True like that anyway. Is this true? No, it's not true. There's there's scooter symbols. I'm not sure why I put them on there. They're the only ones I had in the shop at the time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we didn't mention before, but uh, it's a band I think you enjoy, don't you? Yeah, I sp yeah, Stuart's. I think he's you know, especially really, I really like him a lot. His attitude's great, I think. Mm, definitely. 921, Paul Weller is here with Mick Talbot. A couple more letters. Mand writes from New Milton in Hampshire and wants to know, Paul, what has happened to Aphrodisiac, who were on war on the B-side of Jam's Move On Up, as he put it as the <coughs> most promising act for 83 on the Smash Hits poll last year? Um, I don't know, actually. Um, I haven't really been in contact with him. Um, one of the girls was doing really well. She won some award, some reggae award. But I, I really don't know. I haven't, I haven't been in touch with him, you know, for a long time. They've sung on... Uh, on on Vaughan Toulouse's new single, which is, comes out on May the 27th, oh, just, you know, I don't, but they're, they're on that, they don't back in on that, on the, on the main T Posse single, which is called Fickle Public Speaking, which is pretty hard, you know. Okay. Uh, what was it like, she says, playing to the NATO servicemen in Germany? 
When did you do that? <laughs> oh, God. No, that's from the... Uh, that is one of the... Um, I think... I think it's one of the NME things, you know. They made up... There's a series of about three or four weeks they made up these... Uh, little jokey... Oh, yeah. We didn't, you know, they're, no. not, they're untrue, all of them. OK, Tim Benfield of Pontypool uh, wants to know if you have any plans for a Style Council LP. Yeah, um, I think I think it probably... Maybe it'll come out in November, but we're just going to sort of work on it. We're not, not going to work particularly uh, concentrated, you know, we're not really concentrate on it too much if it, if it happens. You know, we're getting... It's quite an organic way of working now. Uh, we're just going to collect up songs as we go along, really. Um, I've, you know, I've got more of an idea of it now, so I, I'm more kind of looking forward to doing it, which I wasn't before. But I think they, I think they have lots of different moods in it. Perhaps one side will have a bit more of a moody, moody songs and, and maybe a little bit jazzy as well. And the other side, probably more, more of our sort of wacky, wacky, zany pop stuff we do, you know. <laughs> but just, I think it'd be good to have, um, good to have lots of different. At, um, atmospheres and, and moods on it. I like, like the idea of that. Just to make the whole thing more interesting. And maybe we'll have like a booklet in there as well. Okay. Uh, to the to the present future then. You're playing the switch on the 20th of May. Right. And you've got D from Wham with you again. Yeah. From that I understand. Okay. Uh, you said that you were recording in June. That's going to be in in France. Yeah. And you're also recording Tracy's new single. So yeah. We'll start work on that probably. Uh, you know, early June. So I hope that'll be out sometime in July. Okay, and you've got a couple of songwriters, Chris and Lucy. You've yeah, started. Yeah, well, they're, to they're part of this new group called Craze. Who also, they also play at the Lyceum on the same bill on the twenty second. How did you find? How did you find them? Was that from a cassette sent to you? Yeah, they're, and they're, they're really, really good songwriters. And they've got you know lots of lots of interesting ideas, and the lyrics especially are really good. Where are they from? I think they're just from London. Okay. Or, um, yes, London, I think. Okay. Uh, Von Toulouse, who you mentioned, former Department S, is one of the style population. What does that sure uh, expression is. mean? Uh, I haven't got a clue, actually. It's just somebody connected with the style <laughs> council, I guess. And the Main T Posse is his band that uh, right. I read about. Uh, have they actually signed to uh, Respond Records? No. We've, we've formed, we've just done a one-off thing, because, you know, we've, he preferred to do it that way, and so do I, you know. Um, <clears throat> But that song's come out really strong, so I'm not sure. Perhaps we'll do something else, you know, together. Mm -hmm. OK. Uh, in concert for Radio 1 being recorded next week, 25th of May, Style Council, Questions, Tracy, Main T, Posse and Craze. Right. How do you work on... I mean, having not seen you, how do you... Is there a lot of gaps between sort of acts, if you like? I mean, changing equipment around and, and what have you? The, no, there shouldn't be, because um, there's only a minimum of equipment used. It's, um, it's, not, it's not one of the... You know, it's not like stacks of stuff and all that. And... Um, no, it's quite keep it quite simple really. So it should be should just run as a continuous show. We haven't rehearsed it yet, so I ain't got a clue what it's going to be like. But hopefully it'd be quite you know quite smooth. Mm, okay, and uh, a greatest hits, I understand, of the jam is being mm. released at the end of the year. Now this is with your blessing because uh, you're choosing some of the tracks or all the tracks. Well, you know the thing was it, it's obvious that Polydor are going to do it, and I I can't stop them. Well, none of us could stop them anyway because they actually own them songs and those tracks. So I thought the, you know the best thing to do is just do it at least make sure the the sleeve looks good. And the actual choice of songs are, you know, are reasonable. Are you going to remix the songs or re-record them? Do you think to make them sound? Well, there was talk different. about doing that, but I'm not sure. I, I think I don't know if we're going to have time to do that to remix some of them. But it's, it's a possibility. Right. Okay. So there's a lot happening this year for you. Busy yeah. boys. Well, we're going to slow things down a bit after a while. And what are you going to? I mean, if you have spare time, I mean, what, how do you like to spend your time? What are the things <laughs> that you like to do? <laughs> don't get any spare time, really. I mean, what's your uh, idea of a holiday? I mean, if you right now had like next week that you set aside, you said, I'm definitely not, I don't want to write, I don't want to record, I just, for, for therapy, sort of like get away somewhere, what would your idea of a good time be just to kind of relax? Um, I'm not sure, Tra maybe travelling, you know, yeah. travelling travelling through Europe or something. I mean, there must come a point when you are so busy, you actually find you dry up for, for songs. I mean, you obviously you rely on, your, yeah. on what's between your ears for, for coming up with ideas and, and writing songs and things, but if you try to cram too much, then it must come a point, surely, where you just... <coughs> well, I used system. to find that, but I don't... I, you know, recently I haven't found that at all. In fact, I get more and more ideas. You know, that, I haven't particularly... I can't really turn and say I've got, you know, X number of songs, but I've got the ideas, and, I, and the fact that I've got them, I know that they're going to turn out OK at some point in time. So I'm, and now I'm more prepared just to wait and let the ideas come, you know. Have you ever it gone through... It doesn't bother me anymore that I don't... 
I don't write a song a week or something. You know, the main thing is I've got constant ideas, which is which is much more powerful, and much more useful to me. Did you ever have a period though where you, where you did get kind of frightened, where you you had some hits and you oh, suddenly yeah. thought, wow, yeah, you know, loads of times. I mean, every every few months I'd, I'd dry up like that. But now I've sort of learned to. It's just that's just part of it. It happens, you know. It doesn't. Now it doesn't bother me at all. Mm. As long as I get, as long as I come up, keep coming up with different ideas, you know. And what about uh, Mick? You've uh, obviously got one of the tracks on the 12-inch, which is Mix Up, one of your own songs. So do you, will you be doing more co-writing with Paul, do you think, in the future? Is that something, one of your hopes? Well, we could do, yeah. I mean, there's no real set rules. I mean, we, we might be uh, doing someone else's song for the next single anyway, you know, mm. that neither of us wrote. Mm. We just, you know, as long as it's good, you know. I don't want to do it just for the sake of it, but if I write something that's all right... Then it'll happen. We'll do it. Okay. It's, like, it's, like, it's, it's the point we're trying to make in that spit like a child video. We're pretty free, aren't we? <laughs> you know? Well, I'm cheap. You're free. <laughs> you speak to yourself, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Head Start for Happiness is uh, the last number from the Style Council, which we're going to play tonight. One of your songs, Paul. Uh, again, I'll ask you, because it is so very different from Money Go Round, which you mentioned earlier, who came as a result of sort of playing around in the studio after the recording the last single. What about this one? Is this a, 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 a newer song, Head Start for Happiness? Um... No, it's been around for a little while. It, it took me quite a while to get to get it right, you know. It's like um, it's one of the songs that has to go through different different processes to like, to actually think it's right, you know. Um, so probably probably we had it for a couple of months or something like that. I've just kept working at it until I've got it as it sounds now. But we're gonna we're gonna do this in a different way as well. We'd like to try this like this this song in a few different like different maybe try a few different versions of it. I like to do one with a, with, a, with a whole group playing on it. And maybe one with a bit more jazzy, like a jazzy feel to it. And I'd like to get someone like Tracy Thornton to sing it. Ah. It sound nice, I think. Because you worked with her at the uh, ICA, uh, didn't you? Yeah. You know, I really like both of them. And we went to see Ben the other night. He was playing in London. Ben what? Yeah. I thought they were really good, I think, you know. Would you like them to be with Respond? Um, <clears throat> no, I think they're probably better, better as they are because they've got, they've got very independent ideas. And uh, I think they, you know, I think they've got their own kind of direction they're working, working within and towards. Um, but I really, you know, I really like what they're doing a lot. Good. Okay, Mick and Paul, the Style Council. Thanks for coming in tonight.